Topic 7, Lesson 5, Beyond Usability. The essential idea, usability is not the only factor for the designer to consider. Products can be designed to evoke pleasure and emotion. Nature of design, providing satisfaction through aesthetic appeal and pleasure can greatly influence the success of a product, system, or service. Designers need to be empathetic and sympathetic to user emotion, which acts as a critical component to determine how he or she interprets and interacts with a product, service, or system. The comic. Granted, it has some aesthetic appeal, but I can't see any practical application, and for that reason, I'm out. T.O.K. Are emotions purely physiological, or are they culturally bound? Do all humans share the same set of emotions, or as you go around the world into different communities and different cultures, will you see different emotions? Aim 4. The ability to express emotion through a product can not only build appeal for the consumer, but also build affinity between the product and the consumer. It can enable a product to communicate how one should interact with it. Here's Professor, Professor Lionel Tiger. He built the Four Pleasure Framework. He's from Rut Rutgers University in New Jersey. His quote, human beings need pleasure the way they need vitamins. All right, so his four forms of pleasure. The first is socio-pleasure, can be derived from a social interaction. Products and services can facilitate social interaction in a number of ways, email, internet, mobile phones, facilitate communication between people. Other products may promote social interaction by being conversation starters, jewelry, artwork, furniture. Clothing can communicate social identity and indicate that a person belongs to a particular group. Physio pleasure can be derived from the feel of a product during use. Wearing a silk garment or the smooth feel of an iPod, its taste, like eating chocolate, its smell, like the smell of leather or a new car or coffee or freshly baked bread. Psycho pleasure. Pleasure is physiological, happiness is psychological. The emotional reactions engendered through the experience of using a product. For example, it might be expected that a word processor can facilitate quick and easy accomplishment of tasks, would provide a higher level of psychopleasure than one with which the user was likely to make many errors. The outcome may also be more emotionally satisfying and less stressful. Ideo pleasure can be derived from products that are aesthetically pleasing, appealing to the consumer's values. Values could be philosophical or religious and may relate to some particular issue such as an environment or a political movement. These values can be embodied in products. For example, a product made from biodegradable materials might be seen as embodying the value of environmental responsibility. Designing for emotion. Be familiar with the attract, converse, transact model, intentionally triggering emotional responses. The attract part of the model is the aesthetics oriented. The converse part of the model 
is the interaction oriented. The transact part of the model is the function oriented. Products can become desirable, usable, and useful. The last thing we have here is a video, it's a TED Talks, on user-centered design. It's like 12 minutes long, so I'm not going to play it on the recording, but the QR code right here will bring you right to it.